welcome to a new episode of Policy Implications Podcast, where policy meets research. I'm your host, Olga Zadorozhna from Kuzminsky University, where I teach and do research in empirical economics. My guest today is Dr. Kinga Tkhuzhevska, who has just recently become an assistant professor at Kuzminsky University, and before that, Kinga did her postdoc at the University of Mannheim and ZDW Mannheim. Kinga's main area of expertise is environmental and energy economics, and today we will be discussing her research on environmental policy and green investments. So welcome, Kinga. I'm very happy to have you on this podcast and be discussing this research with you. But before we start our discussion of the paper, please tell us more about your research and how did you become interested in this topic? Uh, thanks, Olga. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of your podcast, and it's an honor to be here. So, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, my research interests, uh, as you said, lie at the nexus of public policy evaluation and environmental energy economics. Uh, more specifically, I focus on firms' responsiveness to different types of environmental policies. Uh, but my road towards those topics was not a straightforward one. Um, during my university years, I was actually interested in development economics. And it so happened that after my master's, I got employed as a research assistant on an energy project in Kenya. And it is during uh, that time that I familiarized myself with research on adverse effects of pollution levels. And I became very interested in trying to remedy it. <laughs> and it became became my goal to discover which environmental policies work well and under what conditions. Uh, are there policy mixes that work particularly well too? Uh, I think that um, this is a research um, area where there is still a lot to be done because good quality of data at the firm level is difficult to access also. Yes, it's true. And so in your research, you study environmental taxes and how firms respond to them. Could you please briefly explain what the environmental taxes are and what kind of firms are subject to such taxation? Sure. Uh, so uh, taxes are, are uh, I would say, and I guess you would agree, uh, the favorite policy tool of economists. Uh, it is because they are quite, uh, they quite efficiently regulate negative externalities such as pollution levels, without a direct cost to the society, as in the case of subsidies, for example. And uh, environmental taxes, more specifically, are such taxes that are related to the produced amount of air pollution, waste, and, for example, coastal discharges. From the economic point of view they give much more flexibility to firms because companies can use private information on what would be the best existing green technology to adopt to reduce those pollution levels rather than be told what to do as in the case of command and control regulations. At the same time, of course, there is a lot of resistance in the industry as they're criticized for making firms less competitive and this is especially um, worrisome for them if environmental taxes are not uniformly spread over the regions. Um, when it comes to the types of firms, in my research I focus on industrial firms belonging both to manufacturing and mining industries. Oh, that's interesting. And so uh, those environmental taxes, do they differ across countries? And what is the current situation like with regards to environmental taxation in Poland? Yes, yeah, so um, indeed, the type of environmental taxes and their corresponding rates, they differ not only between country to country, but for some countries, for example, Spain, even from region to region. So this heterogeneity of tax types and their rates is quite substantial. Uh, there is no unified front or a direct recommendation on what would be um, the advised rate. And so except for the EU ETS, the European Union Emission Trading System, there is not much more unification. Uh, when it comes to Poland, I have never studied environmental taxes here in detail. However, to my knowledge, we have a wide range of fees and payments connected to the use of natural resources, energy, air pollution, water pollution that could be interpreted as environmental taxes. Those, however, are quite low, and interestingly, the revenues accrued from those fees are comparable to those of Spain. So my, my suspicion is that uh, since those taxes are not very high, uh, they do not stimulate transition into cleaner production technologies. So firms purely consider those fees as unnecessarily unnecessary fines they have to bear. <laughs> okay, so there is still a way to go for yes, Poland. Definitely. I see. So in one of your papers, you explore the effects of tax incentives on firms' employment and green investments. Could you please describe the mechanism behind it, how these two issues are connected, and how can tax incentives affect firms' employment and green investments? Of course. Um, so 
Tax incentives uh, on environmental investments help firms in addressing capital market failure, so as they decrease the cost adopting of adopting green technology. In case of Spain, this tax credit was equal to 10% of total green investment cost. Uh, and in the period 2006-2011, the tax credit was being gradually phased out by a gradual decrease of 2% each year until its com uh, announced complete phase-out in 2011. Surprisingly, though, in March of 2011, also due to the financial crisis, the Spanish government decided to reintroduce this environmental investment tax credit at a stable rate of 8% for a few more years. Uh, this was done with a note that the tax credit is supposed to finance cleaner production technologies over end-of-pipe technologies. In other words, uh, it should finance technologies that do not only reduce pollution, but are also cost efficient. So they reduce the amount of natural resources used and hence production costs for the company. Uh, in the paper, I used this policy change to see how firms have reacted to it and whether the policy had the desired effect. What I find is indeed interesting. After 2011, we do observe a reduction in investment in end-of-pipe technologies, so those technologies that solely reduce pollution. However, the investment on cleaner production technologies is stable. Additionally, also the policy change and the announcement of complete phase-out led to reduction in employees dedicated to environmental protection activities. It seems that the firms did not react flexibly to the temporary reintroduction, which is a pity. I think. <laughs> yeah. And do the firms respond to tax incentives differently depending on their characteristics, such as size, levels of technology, uh, amounts of pollution they produce, etc.? Yes, so uh, indeed, I found that the policy change has increased um, investment in cleaner production technologies for smaller firms. So those firms that employ less than 50 employees. Um, and this is not surprising as tax incentives are supposed to deal with capital market failure, which is especially problematic for smaller firms. Uh, when it comes to the pollution types, uh, we can see investment in cleaner production technologies for firms that are known to produce higher levels of NO2 pollution. Okay. And so do you think the results are Spain specific because you are using the Spanish data or maybe the results can be the same in other countries and you suggested that levels of taxation in Poland are pretty similar to that of Spain. So maybe there is a possible connection here or lessons to learn. Yeah, Poland? so I, I agree. I, I believe that we can extrapolate the behavior of Spanish firms to other contexts. For instance, the Polish context, as you said, um, uh, and uh, so uh, yeah, definitely, I think that uh, this is a good um, benchmark for other European countries. All right, interesting. And so, what are the main policy implications of your research? What are the most effective ways to induce cleaner production and reduce pollution? Well, if there are any policymakers listening to this, I guess I would have a few main messages to share. Um, firstly, I think it is still very impo important to keep investing in environmental R&D, such that the green technologies improve and they become less expensive to firms. We really need to aim at cutting down the fixed costs of investment in greener technologies, so such that this uh, transition is smoother. Uh, secondly, and here perhaps not everyone will be particularly happy with what I will say, <laughs> we should increase the rates of environmental taxes such that they pass this ineffective stage. Um, there is, however, a way around it. While it is true that if environmental taxes are relatively low, um, they do not incentivize firms' adoption of cleaner production technologies. At the same time, if we really do not want to increase, uh, increase environmental taxes any further, the policy mix between taxes and investment subsidies can work very well and achieve better transitional results than subsidies alone. Um, Thirdly, we need to make sure that we design uh, policy instruments such as tax incentives very clearly, uh, such that they do finance technologies that we consider superior. Um, and lastly, and I would like to emphasize, uh, I would like to emphasize how important it is to have better access to data and statistical offices, such that we economists can perform analysis and share results from evidence-based research. Without access to data and transparency of results, 
there is no future. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I stand behind your last point yes. uh, for sure. <laughs> of course, behind other points as well. And I hope policymakers are listening to these podcasts and then taking notes. So thank you very much, Kinga, for being here and for very interesting discussion. And I do hope that in the future we'll have more green investments and less pollution. Thanks thank so you. much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.